Is the dad like a... Yo, yo, is the grandfather an uh, incubi or something? I was standing alone. The entire class was filled with laughter and chatter. As soon as in the midst of, midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy. All the while, I stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged with any of the drama that might have arisen, like us scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching things pass, things pass by. Things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself I prefer being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one li I like better than me, so I have to spend myself more time with myself. But there was certain bitterness. There was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it in that moment. And after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over to see him. To see what he had to say about it. I had never met him since before that. But what better time to see him then? No one else was going to help me with what I was feeling. I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there. As I was armed only with a scrap of paper with the address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed against the wall, looking at the strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass, and life continued on. I was sadder than ever. I ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that it was silly of me to even think I could change it with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. From that moment, things began to change. My life moved into rusty joints and realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I became part of a crowd that was moving like a blur past me. I was no longer somebody who stood still and watched others hurried past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because of that very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them, though would I? I wanted to, but I wasn't exactly sure what was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly a living arrangement that I had imagined when I would first move in. There was a matter of making sure no one found out, found out about their powers. Thinking about them in a, as lab rats made me, my stomach queasy. And even if I passed for, even if they passed for humans, how would they explain the, having guys live in my house? Imagine my friends coming over. They would practically think I was part of a harem or something. <laughs> oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. Who knows what, what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh, this is so hard. Maybe I should have just written all the pros and cons on the list before actually having to make a decision. Don't, Don't worry, worry too, much too much about it. About it. You, you have plenty of time to decide. decide. Besides... Besides you should do what makes you happy as well. It was strange that I happened to remember that what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it kind of made sense. They weren't exactly in the same situation I was in before, but I did want to help out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my hands into a fist, I, stre I strengthened... What? Strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? Holy fuck, I think I have to romance Eric first. That is, uh... Spit it out already. You could stay with me, here, if you like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what, what went through their heads from, their, from my words, but the silence in the air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you need a place to stay, and well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seemed to make sense. It was still quiet in the room, I decided to keep talking. If you would like to stay here though, there are two things I, I need all of you to follow. Yes. First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. 
We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. Oh my god. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> they all seem to like the idea except for Sam. And hey, I didn't really I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I have just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever. Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Okay. I, I just need to say this right now. Has anybody watched the anime or read the manga, uh, Fruit Baskets? Because Sam reminds me of Kyo. I'm not even joking right now. And Kyo was my favorite. Oh my god. And he was like uh, Ayame, and, and James reminds me of like, um... Oh damn, what was his name? The Mouse. I already forgot, it's been a while since I, I watched it, but th th that's who they remind me of. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes, this is awesome! Also beautiful, <laughs> if you need a bedfellow. Oh my god, stop. Um... Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be al lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed to, my help and wanted to help people was fu was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Finally, I'm starving. <laughs> Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with food on the table. I noticed James' eyes twitching in an irritation, so I stuffed my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh my gosh. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently either. I'm sure they've been starving. <laughs> Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. So then, so, so I, you know what? I'm going to laugh. I don't care. Sorry, I'm gonna- you know what? That's it. I decided I'm gonna romance Eric first. I'm gonna do this uh, playthrough like over again, but I'm gonna romance the other characters, but my first one's gonna be Eric. I don't care anymore, man. <laughs> I couldn't hold my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked um, looked my way, faces stuffed. Is something funny? What are you laughing at? I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. <laughs> you both are so funny. Both of their faces turned slightly pink. They looked away from me, and they swallowed their food in their mouths. Sh shut up! <laughs> we're not funny. We're hungry. You're cute. Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. Shut up, Matthew! <laughs> what? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James, it's entertainment for her. <laughs> Sorry, James. They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple of pieces of food myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel as a part of a family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. You turn the huh? It's my mom. Excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey. How are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hi, Mom. Everything's fine. I'm actually eating dinner right now. Oh, good, good. So there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night. Oh, God. To celebrate the new house and all. A house party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. He didn't like long, long relaxing periods between event, important events. It was slightly messed up. I, I was ex I was expecting to act on the drop of the dime, from moving immediately the day after a funeral to my grandfather's house, oh, after a funeral to my grandfather's house to now organizing a party. I know. Well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. He's a dick. I know. I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thanks, Mom. All right. I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Great. Now how am I gonna do this? Is something wrong? She has to organize a house party oh, Damien. for her parents. <laughs> huh? How did you... Oh, right. My reading. <laughs> But yeah, I gotta do it as soon as I, I gotta do it soon, or my parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, 
Why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. <laughs> Sam? Back off! Uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. That was surprising. I didn't think the boys would offer to help me off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend so I can sleep in. Then it hit me. Wait! Where are all you gonna sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Oh, got it. All right, then. I'm heading to my room to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow? Have a good night. <laughs> I will. You too. With that, I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Oh my god, was he going to follow me? Yes, he was. <laughs> Shh. As soon as I got into my room, a wave of exhaustion hit me. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I just woke up from that nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics books, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at, la at last. She's like sleeping at night? Or no, okay. The words on the page scrambled my mind as I read through them, but after two or three tries, I managed to understand what, pages, what the page was about. Equations. Ugh. Finally, I decided to change my into my pajamas and head to bed. Today has been a long day, and I needed to rest. Hopefully tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprise in a row would kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! What the fuck? <laughs> huh? What's going on? I couldn't move my body, I felt like I was tied up, and I couldn't see anything beyond the darkness surrounding me, yet I could hear the sounds of heated arguments coming fr from, uh, sorry, coming at me from all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit! Fight us like a real man! <laughs> like you scare me, Sam! Come on! Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix! And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly, I felt myself being pulled to one side, and my arms wrapped around, and arms wrapped around my body protectively. I've got you. Don't worry. Oh, Eric! <laughs> huh? Eric? As I, held, as I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the word, world around me once again settle into a low, peaceful hum. The hostility of the dream before it had faded into black, and as the arms around me rocked me comfortably. Slowly through, my eyes fluttered open and I looked up at the person holding me. D damien I stared into the eyes of Damien. His face was painted with worry and concern, and I know he must have seen my dream. Why did I dream of Eric holding me, though? You can't control your dreams. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. What time is it? It's 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Huh? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Yes. I'm sorry for disturbing you both. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Oh, what a sweetie. Uh, oh, thank you. Now, why don't you come downstairs with us and have some breakfast? I'm sure some nice food will take your mind off of what you dreamt of. It was embarrassing to be a damsel in distress once again, but I felt rather happy that James and Damien were concerned for me, despite only knowing me for a short time. I wasn't sure if it was just courtesy or if they were just genuinely concerned. I couldn't exactly read their minds. All right. The two boys led me back to the dining room where, all, where the smell of bacon and eggs danced in the air. The smell wafted from the kitchen and made its way into the room, making my stomach growl in need. Breakfast smells good. We should be done with breakfast soon. If you want to sit down at the table, you can. Damon's a really interesting character that he can read minds. But I'm really curious as to what the other, um, the other Incubi's, um, powers are.
I nodded before sitting down. As I sat down, however, my mind drifted back to the dream I had. That feeling of hostility around me made my body shudder in instinctively, even though I knew it wasn't real. However, as my eyes closed, I felt a hand placed itself on top of my head, breaking me out of my thoughts. Huh? Morning. You alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Sam, the owner of the other hand on my head... Oh, sorry. Sam, the owner of the hand on my head, raised an eyebrow at me before rustling, rustling my hair and moving away to sit down at the table. He then barked towards the kitchen where James was working. Hey! Is the food done yet? I'm starving! <laughs> There's no need to yell, Sam! You're yelling too! Don't argue with me! Oh my god. From behind me, Eric appeared and sat behind, beside me, rubbing his temples in obvious ignorance. Can we not yell this early in the morning? It's not like we're in the castle. Castle? For some reason, when I heard the word castle, I couldn't help but yell in surprise. These guys had a castle? Sam looked at me and smirked at my reaction. Yeah, we have a castle back home. Our dining room's ten times bigger than this room. Then wouldn't it be logical to not yell? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Soon, James and Damien appeared, hands full of plates of ca that carried bacon, eggs, toast, and waffles. They placed the plates down by each se seat before seating themselves. Mmm, my favorite. <laughs> oh my god. Finally. <laughs> Thank you for the breakfast, it looks amazing. It's our pleasure. The freaking ringtone. I, I love this song now. All of a sudden, my phone began to ring. I shrink me to pull it out from my pocket and answer. Hello? Hey, good morning! Guess who's at your door right uh -oh. now? Right on cue, there was a knock from the, lob from the lobby door. My heart stopped. Zuzu and Naomi were here. I'll get it! My heart quickly began to pound in my chest. Matthew was at the in the lobby, and he'd get to the door first. I instantly jumped out of my chair and rushed, rushed out of the dining room. As I passed through the archway between the dining room and the lobby, I saw Matthew reaching his hand for the brass door handle, causing the world to go into slow motion. Matthew, don't! Before my words could reach his, his ears, Matthew had opened the door and revealing the surprised faces of Naomi and Zuzu. Uh-oh. Uh the world had stopped around me as Zuzu and Naomi kept their eyes on Matthew, who was merely staring back in fear and embarrassment. I could feel the air go from more to freezing in a matter of seconds. This is so awkward. Uh. <laughs> Hi? I could not believe what was happening. How was I going to explain this? This is a week. This week was already bad enough. To make matters worse, I was frozen in place. Please, for God's sake, someone do something other than stand there. Who are you? S Suzu, let, let me explain. What's going on here? Who's at the door, Matthew? Oh. <laughs> No, Eric, please don't. Soon the other incubi appeared in the lobby with us. The situation was not getting prettier. I had to think fast. They're visitors, they're my brothers, they're in your head. I'm gonna say they're visitors, because it's kind of awkward to say they're brothers. Then why did one of them open the door? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder as a... As I felt the tension in my body almost fade away, I turned my head to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know the situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. Is he gonna say they're incubi? That's kind of like... I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he gonna tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room, along with Zuzu and Naomi, and sat across from them their confused gazes. As Naomi and Zuzu sat down, Eric, Matthew, and... But Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprisingly they're surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing. Thank you. Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in. I looked at Naomi and Zuzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their mind for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Zuzu ate their impromptu meals. James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... 
G gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me just to eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Zuzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. Does this cover really work? Because they do not look like servants. <laughs> that makes sense. It's such a huge house. A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for. <laughs> but why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and, and stuff. And watch Herlock, apparently. <laughs> or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense, ladies. Well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Ah, uh, I want to hang out with the boys. Sorry, guys. Gonna hang out with the sexy incubi people. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm sure. Besides, it's my housewarming party. I should help out, too. Want us to help out as well? I think we all got it taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. Alright. We'll head on out, then, so we're not in the way. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I led them back to the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them, just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was- oh wait, the party was tonight, and we, all we all had to do, we could make everything right. We sat down and talked <laughs> about what we needed to happen before the party started that, that night. Each guy had been assigned different parts of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was, who? Alright, like I said, I'm going to be romancing freaking Eric, alright? He's too sexy. Just saying. <laughs> I'm like I said, I'm gonna re I'm gonna replay this game again. I'm gonna romance the others, but for my first one, I really want to romance Eric. So here we go. I stayed in the dining room, knowing that the table had become a buffet table. As I looked around the room carefully, I noted that the floor needed waxing and the table service needed major dusting. Eric came up next to me, lowered a small mop of the bucket he had bought onto the floor, and rolled up his sleeves higher, to, higher, higher on his arms before looking at me with a raised eyebrow. Are you sure you want to work with me with cleaning this place up? It'll be a lot of cleaning and tidying. Plus, we have to move the chairs to the corner. I shook my head, rolling my, up my sleeves and walking towards the table, grabbing a hold of a chair. I think I can handle lifting a couple of chairs and moving them. Eric smiled at me with a soft chuckle before following my lead. Eventually, we had moved all the chairs to the corner of the room and had begun cleaning the room and the table. Silence consumed the air as we both focused on cleaning. I decided to mop the floor, but as we, I stepped forward on the bucket, my foot rolled over a small fluffy object, causing me to slip. Of course. <laughs> ah! Before I hit the floor, however, I winded up in the arms of Eric, staring up at him in like a in, in a dance-like dip while gripping onto his shirt. His face held pure concern as he held on and looked down at me. 
Are you all right, princess? Oh my god, he's so like... I'm fine. All I could do was nod as I stared at, at Eric. He was genuinely concerned. There was no flirtation or smirk on his face. It was cute to see this new side of him. <sighs> Eric let out a small sigh in relief. That's a relief. You didn't twist your ankle, did you? N no, I'm fine. G gently, I felt Eric's arm drip under my knees so he could lift me up, a bridal style. I gripped tighter onto his shirt before he sat me on the table and knelt down to look at my feet. I I'm really fine! Eric didn't speak as he gently looked over at my ankle, lightly massaging them to test the pain. I didn't feel any pain. I felt pleasure. I bit my lip as Eric gently massaged his fingers over my skin. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I had a foot ma massage before, but Eric had amazing skill. Each touch... Uh, each touch... Oh my goodness. Each touch and press sent waves of pleasure running up my spine. I had to fight and hold back a moan. Really? <laughs> Is he that good? Eric's face, though, didn't shift any mischief or sedu sed seduction. Can't talk today. It, it remained as concerned as ever. He was full of surprises. Eventually, he finished looking over at my feet and smiled in relief. He stood up and smiled as he usually smiled at me with a small giggle. You were right, princess. You were fine. Eric gently lifted me off the table and lowered me onto the floor before placing a swift kiss on my forehead and continuing his work. I stood there for a moment before slowly walking to the bucket and cleaning as well. My heart continued to pound as we both finished cleaning that room. The hour of the house party has arrived. In my mind, I kept doubling and triple I kept double and ch triple checking my essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he'd invite business partners over and executives to the of the Anderson company to show me off. I stood in front of the mirror of my room, staring at my for form as a million thoughts ran through my head. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time it wasn't. It was, my, it was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was at my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I did have the incubi to thank. But even so, I didn't have, any, I didn't have my dad guiding me and more, or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock, a knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I am ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Alright. Aw, oh, they all look pretty. <laughs> of course, of course Susan's gonna wear something like that. <laughs> they all look pretty, though. As soon as I opened the door to the hall, I watched as, Na as Naomi and Susan's face turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Yeah, you look amazing! Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while, I just never had a chance to wear it. I figure I might as well bring it out now. Damn, damn, look at Eric. Damn. <laughs> I stepped out of my room and closed the door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, the incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom, all dressed in their nines as proper servants. Whoa, they really know how to dress well, don't they? They really do. I like I like how Matthew's shirt is like untucked. <laughs> yeah, I was slightly taken aback at how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had a, po a poise of, of perfect gentlemen, even Sam. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Zuzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the stair staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for the princess. I felt my face slightly flushed, but I quickly st shook my head to try re to regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered to. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down the final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? As ready as I'll ever be, I guess. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all that I could to prepare for it. Now, it was all up to fate. The other boys smiled, assuring at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Hey mom. Hey dad. Oh my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. It was probably overlooked. 
Besides, who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys. They didn't ask for verification or anything. I looked at the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they trying to use their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple of days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. <clears throat> Gorgeous! You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked at my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let out a small, grace li what? He let a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded in my chest. Did my dad just compliment me on his own accord? My mom was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, Daddy. However, his cold face quickly returned and he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? God, the dad is still a dick. What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. My potential? To become CEO of the company. I knew it. Something was off about tonight, and now this party has become much more than I anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked to the incubi, but they were continuing to be my servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Zuzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt like a weight in, I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As the time zoomed forward, all of a sudden the main hall and lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and to see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but once again I was surprised that night. As I shook my head with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad had trained me to have, I felt overwhelmed. I hid it well behind a small smile and a handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as maturely as, I, as possible. I had to remember, say what they want to hear, not what, the, what you want to say. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Okay, what they want to hear, not what you want to hear. Okay, it's been pretty good, actually. I'm doing my best. It's been difficult being independent. I wish there were more living parents. It could be... I'm so sorry. What the fuck? I didn't answer. Passing away. It really hit all of us hard. Uh, yeah. Th thank you for your condolences. Do you have college plans? Uh, duh, 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 yes, I do. <laughs> I feel like this question came up more than another. It was tough to answer. Some of them... Because they weren't about me, they were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? Oh god. Uh, it will get back track soon. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? What the fuck is that? If you're asking me, the okay. Do you think the company should expand from just toys? Uh, it's a possibility. Eventually, the question stopped, and I was back to being myself. Naomi and Zuzu were mingling in the crowd, and the Incubi were doing their job. So I was all alone in the room, full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't questioned left and right anymore. Suddenly, through, suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing so along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Oh, God. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. I bet you the parents want to set her up with, um, this guy. <laughs> Dude, with my mother stood, a man looked down at a couple of years older than me. He smiled and held his hand to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Mmm, simply not. Uh, okay. I, won't, I don't want to be rude. As I placed my hand in his, he raised his lip to, to his lips and kissed it all over my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before releasing his hand. My, blah, 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 my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thanks. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his 
his his lip to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Uh-huh. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> oh, wow, I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, but I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone walk beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving me a cold, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. Andrew's body slightly twitched. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, even, enough to break at the wrong word. Did he do something weird? What the hell's going on? You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well... Oh, I think he's just jealous because he didn't want anybody with the family to take over the company, right? I stared at Andrew. This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place in the as CEO? I thought that the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. I'm not gonna follow him. Should I follow him? Should I follow him? Fuck it. I don't want to say where the parents are kind of weird. I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was alright. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. We wound up outside. The stars practically danced in the grass and we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been the first time in years since I'd been out there, but I thought they weren't but my thoughts weren't on the nostalgia. Hey Andrew Andrew turned to me in surprise, however his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt terrible. Oh, I am um, I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean for the way that my dad had behaved. He shouldn't have been so. Oh no, no, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing to see Andrew's professional side, then seeing his goofy smile away. Uh, what? Smile away from everyone. Still, I'm sorry for that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised his eyebrow in confusion. Jessica. My name is Jessica. In an understanding, his smile returned before he took my hand and gently shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. Nah, it's not that nice. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? Your dad, apparently, or your parents. <laughs> a lot of people do. But how about Axel or Ace? Something cool like that. Oh, goodness. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. I don't know why, but I felt warm. Whether it was with the most non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt nice. Lewis. Uh-oh. And just like that, the feeling had vanished. We both turned to see my dad at the door of the mansion, staring at Andrew, but almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain a business posture. Yes, sir? Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home now. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad? I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with you him. You don't gotta be a dick, though, Dad. <laughs> before I could re retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was nearing an end. I sighed and I entered the house, waiting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Zuzu and Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him. A wave of confusion washed my, over my face. What? 
You did good tonight. I'm proud. Uh, oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. Oh, right. All right. Your mother and I have to leave. I'm sure Naomi and Suzu need to leave as well. Just because it's Saturday doesn't mean you should stay up all night. Oh, right. Thanks for having us. It was a great party. We'll come visit tomorrow or something. Right. See ya. Good night, sweetie. Come visit us soon. Will do. My remaining guests left the building, and but all but my dad waving back to me. When the last of my guests had gone, I sighed and sat on the staircase, exhausted. Phew, that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. <laughs> Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. <sighs> oh, God. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. What the hell is this? I felt a hot shudder run down my spine. The voice in my dreams echoed through the air in my ears. I looked around in panic along the side the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Who is it? All of us shot our heads towards the door, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The door sw quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would never, I would never as uh, expected to see. What the hell? <laughs> Whoa! Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold, piercing into mine, roughened up clothes, and a pistol in his hand. I saw a monster. I covered my mouth and tried not to scream at the sight. Dried blood covered the banana, ar the bandana around his neck, and he smirked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman matching thug in cl uh, clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, Who is this guy? You? Is this the guy who shot them up? I hoped you would, you piece of- All of a sudden, the man raised a gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. <gasps> shot him! We all gasped in shock, instinctively expecting the bullet to run through Sam's face, but- what the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended up with a loud, empty blank shot. The pistol echoed in its empty shot as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over again in exaggerate. He's angry. <laughs> Luckily for my ears, it became quieter after the first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal. Protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw the gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the ground a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting a wall, and finally stopped. In uh, a final stop. As it stopped moving, the gun faded into the black flame and disappeared in thin air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Grandfather did, really? Malix, that was his name. His existence was sown in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked at Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> it would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Malix's face grew to that of an extreme. Blah, blah, blah. Malix's face grew to that of an extreme anger. His fist tightened and he, if, as if he was crushing a stress, stress ball. Well, I can't talk. Then what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Uh, why aren't you doing it then? <laughs> out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to him instead, and being powerless like I was in the dream. Fuck off. Malik suddenly, Malik suddenly laughed wildly and stared at me in disbelief. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Who let the bitch out of her cage? What is this? A reverse harem or something? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, you know, for a free game, the voice acting is pretty good. Can't deny that. Malik grinned at me evilly, walking close to me. Uh, duck. I ducked underneath Malik's incoming hand. I stared at his hand and as his back 
what black flame tattoo surprised me as I took a couple of steps back from Alex's. Matthew and Damon stepped in front of me, guarding me from Alex with their arms. <laughs> a quick one. I'm liking you more and more. Back off, Malix! Don't start acting tough, you pathetic excuse of a demon! You need more protection than her. Don't talk to Matthew that way, you dick. Shut up! Oh, did I make little Matthew cry? Why don't you just grow up here? <sighs> Enough, Malix! The woman who had been standing next, standing in silence the whole time planted a firm hand on Malix's shoulder. Malix looked back to her with a growl and glared at that could kill. Since when did you get the guts to speak out of place? We both know you never controlled me. I want them dead just like you do. Fuck off. I know what I'm doing. Do you? Even if you did fight them, there's five against two. We never win. Shut up! Let's go, Malix! We're wasting our time! The two growled at each other. What? The two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense that fire would have glowed from under their teeth. Malik grunted and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his finger like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? The voice acting is so damn good. Then Malix turned to me, moving his fingers, pointing directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my knees give up from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn and catch me. Whoa, whoa. Are you alright? Yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> we should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I stood up, rubbed, rubbed my arms, feeling the goosebumps of Malik's left on my left behind on me. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malix, was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil? There's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know as hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was all confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed, and I had happened to land in the middle of it. W what do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. What? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him, or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. Is that dad like a... Yo, yo, is the grandfather an incubi or something? What the fuck? <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears. It was supposed to be a third day and surprises it took one... It was the third day of surprises and this one took the cake, and being most surprising, I felt my head spin once again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <sighs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. What about going outside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malik. Still, I could not help but feel nervous and apprehensive ab about the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malik did the same? Even more so, I was lost, ab lost about my grandfather. What? Even more so, I was lost about how my grandfather knew about magic. I had to find out. 
At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous. Despite the words, despite the words of the incubi, I felt like a target something. I had never been able to explain or prove. Magic? Devils? Demons? How did this all even happen? Should I be meddling with this? Blah, blah, blah. Should I even be meddling with this? The situation? They are only staying after. Oh my god! They are only staying until after they defeat Maliks. That's right. They said they only stay after until they defeat Maliks. After that, my life could go back to normal, temporarily insane, as Kay would say. The question was, would I want them to leave? If my life went back to normal, then I had to care for my house and all in my own. I get a focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I have to. My life. Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents with only with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I had nowhere to hide my res from my responsibilities. Enough. Let's just sleep and deal with it tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my senses of the thought, I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I would be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. What the hell? Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. I slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and force me to wake. I rubbed my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m.? Why am I so- why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to get back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips, and I threw my legs over the side of my bed. What do I do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Make some coffee, work on homework, explore the house. Yo, let's explore the house. <laughs> I decided it was a good idea to wander around my house. I never really explored it much as a child, so there would be bound to be new surprises. Well, come on, feet. Let's go on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure, as Bilbo Baggins would say. <laughs> I stood at an exit in my room, hoping that the boys would, were still asleep. I began to wander the halls at the end of the house, opening each door to find what room, uh, what room each door led to. Quickly found an old office. A desk and a chair sat far uh, sat on the far side of a large bookshelf. Documents, memorabilia, donned its nooks and crannies, where there were a couple of pictures of growing up, up from the uh, blah, blah, blah. there were <laughs> there were a couple of pictures of me growing up from peeking up from the shelves as further walk as I further walked into the room. I don't believe I've been in here before. I tried to recall the memories of ever seeing this room, coming up with nothing as a result. This room is new to me. Did I want? Did I want to disturb the furniture? I'm curious. I gently opened the shelves and any drawers I saw in the room. In a couple were books and even sewing kits. I assumed they were used by my grandfather's toys left them al and I left them alone. One drawer, however, was locked, no matter how many times I pulled. Grr, come on, open! Nothing. It would not budge. The drawer beside it, though, did reveal a laptop. Why is there a laptop in a drawer? I lifted it from the drawer and carried it over to the desk and chair, opening it, it, opening it. It was high-tech laptop with a retina scanner as a pass lock. I was not sure whether or not to try to unlock it or not. Fuck it, let's try. I decided to try. I turned on the computer and leaned my face near the retina scanner, lining my, the camera up with my eye. To my surprise, I heard the ping come from the computer before the screen opened to the desktop. Huh, look at that. On the desk side were documents and folders labeled with different aspects of the Anderson Company. Taxes, profits, bylaws, products. The list went on and on. If I really did want to become CEO of the Anderson Toy Company, I had everything at my fingertips. Dad would be sure impressed. One icon, however, stood out from the rest. Forgaro? What? Forgo? For, for a go? For, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I double clicked on the icon, but no window came up. Instead, I heard a large click from the, from the drawer that was locked. What the? I slowly lifted my I slowly left my seat and walked over to the drawer, attempting to opening it again. It slid open smoothly in the direction of my pulling hand, revealing two books. It was a plain black journal with a tie closed around it. The other was bound to, in leather with a cryptic symbol over uh, all over the cover. I took out the journal and skimmed through, the, through it, seeing my grandfather's notes. 
There were all detailed explanations and opinions on his findings of demon magic. He really did know magic. I sat down at the desk and read through the journal further, finding drawings and sketches of symbols of magic and magic circles, each with their own different meaning and effects. It was fascinating. There was even a page of important spells to know. I read through them, trying to memorize them in my mind. I don't know what come to, came over me, but I, stared, I started to feel more energetic and more powerful simply reading my grandfather's notes. I was suddenly aware of the energy that surrounded my body and the power that around the house. The more I read, the more powerful I became. However, my mind suddenly froze and I found myself walking back to the drawer, putting the book back and closing the drawer, then lock, reset, and I snapped out of it. Huh? What? I shook my head and looked at the drawer again, realized what I had done. I walked over to the desk and reopened the lock, but suddenly I felt the need to stop. Something held me back and I and didn't want me to pry any more that I than I already had. I was curious beyond belief, but I obeyed my own thoughts for now. Eventually I would come back and look into it. Is it because of the magic? I think it's because of the magic, so it's like whatever her grandfather put the spell on that, I don't know. I returned to the bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag under my covers, and tried to sleep again. I had the energy, but I wanted to sleep. It was Sunday, and nothing was happening today. Come on, eyes, back to sleep. I shut my eyes and, sl and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet I feel it felt like I had slept for much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed and ch got changed into my normal clothes and went to the main hall, and I sat on the stairs. Sundays were very boring. However, the muffled sound of a battle, a battle caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went out to the backyard in response to the noise I heard. In the yard were all five boys practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle of it, on the other four surrounded and throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, was being the strong Sam, being the strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Uh, I'm not going to disturb them. <laughs> I just watched. The boys were very much on their own world, focusing on the training they had. It was no better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside the kitchen. I was getting hungry, and I'm sure the boys would need to eat soon, too. So, lunch we must was a must. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Lunch wasn't particularly hard. I just... I decided to make... Sorry, I'm just distracted. And I just realized something. The environments in the background, they're in 3D, aren't they? They're 3D models. Yeah. Uh, cold crust sandwiches, pizza, simple chicken and rice. Make pizza, fuck it. Pizza's always good, no matter what time of day it is. Do we have any? Luckily, we had some peas in the freezer to heat up. Pizza more baked with, lo with love pizza. The model had the makings of a pizza type, including pepperoni, sausage, mushroom, and extra cheese. Just to top it, bake it, and serve. I had to get more later. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there by the time I brought the final dish out. I carried out the dish to the main lobby, catching the boys separating into different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go into one particular to go in one, particularly. The other part of me wanted to leave them be and take the food in my hand and place it in a room to eat. Maybe I could go out today while the boys are focused on training. I'm gonna find the incubi. Eric, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I quickly rushed back and grabbed my second uh, food dish before hunting down one of the I returned to the backyard, hoping to find an incubi still there. Luckily, my gut feeling was right. Eric was beside the gazebo, looking at small flowers that were growing on the railing of it. As I approach, Eric turned his head and smiled with his usual smile. Hello, princess. Hi hey, Eric. I got lunch for you. Really? You did not have to do that, princess. I like how he calls her princess. It's so cute. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Here. Eric smiled and took his food, eating it a little bit before looking at the flowers again. Out of curiosity, I looked as well. It was simple white daisy in full bloom. Eric shook his head and chuckled softly as I joined him in the flower gazing. <laughs> Sorry, I was simply reminded of home. Huh? Oh no, you're fine. <laughs> what about your home? Oh, wh what about home were you reminded of? Eric looked at the sky with a soft smi sigh and smiled before looking at the flower again. The castle, mainly. Despite us not being there anymore, it was still our home. We grew up there our entire lives as brothers. There wasn't a day that went by when we weren't all doing something exciting. It was an empty excitement, of course, but... 
but it was still something that bonded us all together. Eric slightly trailed off, looking at lost nostalgia in his thoughts. I didn't know if I wanted to bother him while he remembered something so obviously important to him. Please tell me more. <laughs> Sorry. Eric turned uh, turned again to me with a slight surprised look. You wish to know more? Why not? I'm really curious about the place you lived in. Eric nodded before looking at the flower again. After a second, he gained a look of realization before looking in at me again. Would you like me to show you something instead? Yes, please. Please show me. <laughs> I tilted my head in confusion, but nodded nonetheless. With the expecting... I was expecting... But what was I expecting could not have prepared me for what I saw. Eric gently brushed his fingers against the petal of the daisy, making it gently quake in his touch. As the daisy abnormally shivered, its petals shifted from white to purple. The yellow center gently faded into a pink hue as the sun began to burn black. I could, I could only stare as Eric plucked the flower from its place and presented it to me. Watch closely. I kept my eyes on the flower as Eric began to mutter something. It sounded like close to Latin, but I wasn't sure. Regardless, the flower began to glow in Eric's hand. Small crystal-like spores floated up from the pink center and began to form in circles in the air. As the circle closer, the center filled with smoke, for forming a screen of some sort. It was misty, so I couldn't see anything. What is this? Just watch. I raised my eyes eyebrow, but I followed his instructions. Eventually, the mist faded away, revealing a large throne room. It was a stone tile. It was all stone tiled with the throne itself covered in red fabric and gold metal. Despite it being a mirror image in a magic mirror, it felt like looking at a site of a throne room. Wow, this looks amazing. That's our castle. It's a wonderful place. Servants and parties galore. Huh. Does your father sit on the throne when he's at his parties? <laughs> Very much so. He despises dancing and socializing, so he makes the throne his home. That makes sense. I would probably do the same. Do you think he's still there now? I must have st struck a small chord with Eric because he hesitated before responding. Eric smile uh, smiled. Oh my god! Eric smiled only slightly. We don't know. When we left, we didn't look back. However, we are sure he's still there, since no one followed us out of the abyssal plains. I bent my lip. Maybe I shouldn't have asked. I felt really bad. However, I didn't feel it for long. The magic suddenly stopped and faded away while Eric dropped the daisy. As the daisy turned back into his white and yellow color, Eric dropped into knee, groaning in pain. Eric, are you alright? Yes, princess. I'm fine. I just used too much energy, that's all. Ooh, his powers is like the magic mirror, right? I dropped to a knee to try and examine Eric closely. His face was pale while his purple-ish eyes shifted back and forth between the purple and gold. His breath was heavy, which concerned me. He used too much energy? That meant he needed more. Please don't worry, princess. I'm fine. Don't worry your beautiful head about it. Oh, Fuck it. Nope. We're kissing him. I don't care. I felt responsible. I had to help. I quickly grabbed Eric's face and tilted his head to an angle with mine. Shifting myself closer, I brought my lips to him I brought my lips to his and kissed him deeply. I didn't know if this would help, but it was it was how he got his energy before. I shut my eyes waiting for the draining to feeling to waiting for the draining feeling to re, re, re to re reappear in my body. What the hell? However, gra Eric grabbed my shoulders and forced me back. I opened my eyes and stared into his frightening golden eyes sh in surprise. At the same time, I noticed his pink hue run across Eric's face. Princess? What are you doing? I'm trying to kiss you, Eric. I don't know why, but I felt both irritated and accomplished at the question, and at the look that he was giving me, wh where was his flirting? Where was his cocky smirk? From what I remembered, he took advantage of me when we first met, yet now he is somewhat ac acting inferior to me? I grabbed his hands and moved them from my shoulder, tangling, tangling my fingers with his. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help and give you some energy. You used energy to show me that sight, so I want to pay you back for that, unless you don't want me to help. Well, I've, I've already taken your energy once before. I just... That was before. I want you to give you energy now. Just let me. 
All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warm running through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Eric quickly released my hands and wrapped them around my waist, dropping to both knees in front of me. He stared at me with desire in his gaze as he pulled my body to his. Eric leaned his forehead to mine, letting the tips of our nose gently caress each other as he spoke. Yo, do the music already. <laughs> like, yes. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! I did not expect that. Damn! <laughs> Eric has got moves, like really? Before I knew it, I was on top of Eric as he laid on the grass below. I stared wide-eyed as he pulled me into a hot and passionate kiss with a gentle hand on my back of my head. Eric's other hand rested on the small of my back while I rested my hands on his chest. I moved myself to straddle his hips to be more comfortable in the kiss. The energy from my body was slowly draining, making me feel light and warm. It was still almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in the situation. Still, I had held no regrets. I was enjoying every bit of the case. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> this is so. This is so awesome. I love it. While Eric held me, he gently rolled b us both over, so he was on top of me, kissing me hotly and holding me tightly. I was tempted to wrap my legs around him, but I re remained focused on that kiss. Yo, we're not going that far yet. We just kissed him. <laughs> it was better than I. <laughs> it was better that I was on the bottom anyway, with more my energy slowly fading from my body. However, from my body. However, the draining feeling suddenly stopped as Eric pulled away and looked down at me. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I forgot how to breathe. Eric, however, didn't move from me, but moved my strands of hairs from my face, eyes still full of desire. Right. You said you never kissed anyone in the beginning of this game. Sam was the first kiss. And then Eric. Second. I don't know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> I'm completely full. And yet, I still desire. Holy shit. <laughs> I can feel my- s I, <laughs> I could feel the holes in his mind altering spell fade away, but still I felt hot. Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. I don't care, we're going- we're fully going into the smut. I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I opened the opportunity I was, I was enjoying as much as he was. I wanted more, and I was pulling- I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I reached up, pulled down, and kissed him, giving him a slight approval to keep going. I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it, and falling through my hands around my neck. He moved the ribbon around my what, ground beside me before simply unbutting the top buttons of my blouse, stopping at the buttons above my- Whoa, wait a second! Hang on, we're getting naked already? What? <laughs> this is so fast! The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing, forcing a moment to escape my lips as he ran his kisses uh, from my lips to ex to my exposed neck. Alright, I'm just saying, the usual fanfic that I read, like, there's a slow burn. This is, like, really fast, in my opinion. As he began to ravish my neck and my shoulder with hot kisses, I leaned my head back against the grass and let a pleasurable sigh escape my lips. Eric's, Eric was ruthless in his passionate kisses on my skin. Eric didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans guests rush from out of my mouth into the open air. He was full, but he was still hot as I was. I could- you, you know shit, he's horny, alright? <laughs> I couldn't comprehend how much time we had spent making out. I was so lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything in that moment, even though he lowered his kisses down my chest and above my bra. My and my heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Eric intrigued me immensely, but something made me my heart quaken for him. I couldn't have been in love. It was too passionate but it was too passionate to be lost. What was it? However, I began to feel dizzy seeing the sky uh, what? Seeing the sky start to spin almost wildly, I gripped onto Eric's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded into black before I could let out another sound. <laughs> Hang on. Well, let's pause for a minute. So she fainted because it was too hot. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I felt good. I didn't care that I blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be th that good. 
I now just awaited awaken, hopefully in a, in a good way. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I felt familiar skill underneath me, letting me know that I was in my bed. Oh, sorry, silks, not skill, what the hell. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that, that lingered. I still felt the very soft pain in my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently in, in healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned, as if nothing happened between me and Eric. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned turn to get out of my bed, though, I spot my ribbon on the pillow beside me, the, beside the one I slept on. It was tied in a nice bow around a daisy. Eric had picked up a small note to attach to it. I gently slipped a note from the tie and opened to read it. You've spoiled me, my princess. I am eternally grateful that you let me indulge like that. Have a good rest. Oh my god. <laughs> I stood with a note, uh, letting a small smile grace my lips. Spoiled him. I enjoyed it, despite the first time circumstances. It was cute, though, to imagine him think thanking me for something we both did, did and enjoyed. I brought the daisy to my nose and gently inhaled the, small, sm bleh, the soft fragrance, letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. I indulged myself, too, Eric. Damn right I did. Damn right. I'm so glad I picked Eric for the first one. I looked at the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on the phone showed 5.30-31pm. 30, Yikes! Four hours before being knocked out, and I still feel, feel tired. It was Sunday, so I allowed myself to sleep longer, if I wanted to. The reminder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Unsus unsurprisingly, the food was perfect, but it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. They mostly likely had already eaten, but still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good about going to bed that, that night. I felt like I could have been... Oh my god, I felt like I could have a peaceful uh, sleep. After the previous rough nights I had, I felt good. I drifted asleep and woke up almost flawlessly the next morning. No grogginess, no ache, perfectly energized and bright-eyed. Man, how long has it been since I got that much good sleep? I looked at my alarm clock, awoke ten minutes before my alarm. Well, hey, I must be lucky today. Kyra was owed me some luck. After all, I had gone through m mer nearly a handful of days. I deserve to get some good luck. She got lucky with Eric, alright? So I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> Static for the day ahead, I turned off my alarm before I could, it could ring, and I got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Huh? Who's texting me this early? Yo, Anderson! You're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at 7 stat. <laughs> oh dear. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive, yet I didn't have a car. It was so awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time, 6.30. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried down the stairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate of eggs, toast, and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the plate with, a sug with sugar and creamer on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke out loud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys, but maybe it was from him? I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating it up. The food was so delicious I devoured every amazing bite. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone looked, took my hand. Huh? I turned to see Eric, who was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name. Your name? My true name isn't Eric, miss. I want you to know my real name, if something were to happen. What is it? His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? I remember reading about demons' names in the journal. I read yesterday, if you knew a demon's true name, you could summon them to you, no matter where you were and where they were. Eric gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Uzairis. 
Yo, he has a sexy voice. So he could stop. <laughs> Uzeris? Alright. As he said that his name, I could feel it locked into my memory. Something in my, my head would make sure I would never forget it. Eric pulled away and smiled at me, despite his still caring worry gaze at me. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. Eee, my shining white knight! <laughs> I stared up at Eric, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Eric smiled before kissing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that name would be used will be used eventually. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Zuzu waving me down. I rushed to the door and we head to school, talking about homework and the coming day. Hey, we're gonna bring on Michaela. We're, we're waiting for Kayla. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm here. Guys, I am now see this is why I'm the mother of this too sweet. Tastes like shit. <laughs> you have bad taste. I don't even know how to start explaining how wrong you are. 